In this video, I will solve an example problem on the recent topics that we covered in the videos and the lecture notes. Okay, so we have given a transfer function, it's a second or transfer function. Our first goal is to find a state space representation. Okay, so as you can see, it's second order, but it's a very simple form. It's in the form of summation of two blocks, right? Okay, and they're first order. So what we can do is we can use diagonal Kalmak form in the continuous domain, uh, which is very easy. Okay, x of dot is equal to of diagonal elements are equal to zero, and at the diagonals, I'd simply put the poles. Okay, first pole is equal to zero, second pole is equal to minus ln2. Okay, x, plus since it's diagonal kind of form, it will be just once at the B matrix, it's you. So output is very simple. I will put the coefficients 1, 1 times x. Okay, as you can see, there is no direct connection between input and output. The matrix is equal to zero. Okay, so we solve our first problem. Okay, or first part. The second part is, it says compute the state transition matrix. That's great. So let's clean it to get some space. And it will be critical for the other part also. So e to the power a t is the state transition matrix. Okay, which is equal to, okay. So since you have a diagonal a, e to the power a t is very easy. Okay, if you follow the features and uh, technically uh, definition of uh, exponential matrix, you will see that diagonal matrix, if you take the e to the power a of a diagonal matrix, it will also diagonal. So of diagonal elements will be equal to zero. And the diagonals, you simply put e to the power, okay, this, zero times t, e to the power, this, minus ln2 times t, just write it in a simpler way. Okay, e to the power a, the state, the transition matrix is equal to 1, 0, 0. I think this is equal to 0 0.5 to the power t. It should be true. Let's check. It's true. Okay, it's great. So we computed the state transition matrix. So let's also keep here, which is uh, very important uh, for our next step. So next step is uh, under the assumption that the sampling time is equal to 1. Okay, so let's change the color. t is equal to 1 second. And we have a classical zero order halt operator at the input. Uh, we sample the uh, states and outputs with the same sampling uh, frequency and same sampling uh, time. Uh, find the discrete time, discrete time, state space counterpart. Okay, so if you remember from my previous video, the G matrix is simply equal to e to the power A capital T, capital T is equal to 1, so it's equal to e to the power A. So if I compute G, it will be equal to 1, 0, 0, as you can see. It's equal to 0 0.5. It's super easy. Okay, in general, computation of G is the easiest part. Computation of B can be a little bit tricky, and we will do that in a second. Okay, so what is B? Uh, or no, what is H? Okay, so input matrix of the discretized state space equation. So I write a formula, okay, under the assumption that A is not invertible, but A, as you can see, have an eigenvalue at the, uh, at, uh, that's equal to zero, which means that it's a rank deficient matrix. So I cannot invert A, so I cannot use the formula. So what I should do is I still should simply use the definition, okay, which is equal to zero to t e to the power A lambda times B times D lambda. Okay, so if I write this, okay, this is A, this is B. This is a to the power t. If I computed that, I will simplify it in a very nice form. 0 to the 1, okay, 1, 0 0.5 to the lambda, okay, d lambda. If I take the integral, I will see that it's very easy. 1, I think this will be equal to approximately 0 0.722. Okay, so I computed h. Okay, that's good. Uh, what I left is I need to compute c and d matrices. But I know that C and D matrices of the discretized state space are exactly equal to the C and D matrices of the original continuous state space approach. Okay, so let's write everything in a clean framework. X k plus one is equal to one zero 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 point five x of k plus one zero point seven to two u of k and y of k is simply equal to 1, 1, x of k, that's it, you don't have any d. Okay, so next, the uh, last phase is, say, the computer discrete type 
pulse transfer function, or technically y of c divided by e of c. And our goal is to like, check that if it's correct or not, and if it satisfies our original uh, definition. Okay, very nice. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so what is y of c divided by r of c? It's very simple. Uh, y of z divided by r of z is equal to, uh, let's look at the formulas, okay, that we derived in the previous lectures, c times z i minus g to the power inverse times h. Okay, uh, very nice. Okay, and it is equal to 1, 1, okay, z i minus g inverse times 1, 0 0.7 to 2. That's great. Okay, so let's write it like this. So 1, 1, okay, so what is our z minus i minus g matrix? It's equal to z minus 1, this is 0, this is 0, this is z minus 0 0.5. We have 1, 0 0.7 to 2, okay, that's great, and we have minus 1 here, okay. So this is also diagonal, kind of, uh, diagonal. so taking the inverse square is easy, it's equal to 1, 1, okay. 1 over z minus 1, this is 0, 0, 1 over z minus 0 0.5, it's equal to 1, 0 0.7 to 2, okay, that's great. So if I computed that, okay, 1, z minus 1, okay, that's great, 1 over z minus 1 plus, okay, this is equal to 0 0.7 to 2 divided by z minus 0 0.5. Okay, so I computed discrete time transfer 